point about the action potential process that I want to emphasize is its passive element. After the current from the voltage-gated sodium channels enters the axon, it is the passive flow of current that travels to open the adjacent channels. This passive propagation is very important to take into account because it is essentially the rate limiting factor in how fast the action potentials travel. The velocity at which the action potential travels is more often referred to as the conduction velocity. Over time, evolution has provided two main mechanisms for neurons to increase their conduction velocity. Because passive propagation is mainly what governs how fast the signal travels, we have to bring back our passive membrane properties to understand how these mechanisms operate. To get more information on these properties, you can refer to the section on the equivalent circuit model and on the cable theory to see where these equations come from. The two main mechanisms that increase the conduction velocity are linked with the diameter of the axon and the level of myelination of the axon. Starting with the axon diameter, let's consider two distinct segments of axons with the sole difference that one is larger than the other. In terms of passive membrane properties, a larger diameter will have the effect of decreasing the axial resistance and essentially increasing the space constant. If we imagine this dotted line as being the threshold to open voltage-gated sodium channels, when the most upstream channel opens, a higher value of lambda in the larger neuron will make so that the signal decays less in terms of distance, which will be able to reach and open channels at a further distance for the same amount of time. Hence, Neurons with large diameters have faster conduction velocity down their axon. Now, to understand the second mechanism, we first must discuss where myelin comes from. Myelin is provided in the body by two different specialized glial cells, the Schwann cells and the oligodendrocytes. Schwann cells myelinate individual segments of the axon in the peripheral nervous system, as well as the spinal nerves and the cranial nerves 3 to 12. Oligodendrocytes myelinate multiple axons, sometimes up to 30, in the central nervous system. Oligodendrocytes are also responsible for myelination of the second cranial nerve. To understand what myelin is, we can consider its formation. If we take Schwann cells, for example, and we look at the cross-section of an axon, the formation of myelin sheets begin when the Schwann cell starts wrapping around the axon. Like any other cell, the Schwann cell has a cytoplasm and a nucleus. Over time, the Schwann cell will continue wrapping around the axon such that its cytoplasm gets displaced out and only concentric layers of membrane hug the axon. This results in the separation of an inner membrane layer named the myelin sheet and the external cytoplasmic layer named the neurilemma. Two very important proteins involved in holding myelin together are the myelin basic protein and the proteolipid protein. Between each myelin segment, you will notice that there are bits of axons that are free. These free segments are known as nodes of Ranvier, and these nodes are very important because they are concentrated with voltage-gated channels. Back to our passive membrane properties, let's consider two axons of the same diameter, but one myelinated and the other not to see how myelination impacts the conduction velocity. First, remember that as current passively propagates, there is always some loss of current that is partially due to ionic leaks. In myelinated segments, there is essentially no possibility of leakage, and as a result, the current is better maintained. To put it in passive membrane terms, the reduction of channels caused by myelination increases the membrane resistance. Another consequence of myelin comes from the additional thickness it provides to the membrane, which considerably decreases the capacitance by separating the charge at a longer distance and reducing the electric field between the opposing charges. The impact myelin has on the membrane resistance and capacitance can be further analyzed through the time and space constants. The time constant will remain somewhat unchanged because capacitance goes down and resistance goes up. When it comes to the space constant, here again, the increased membrane resistance will yield a higher constant and as you expect, the conduction velocity will be increased. The larger space constant in this scenario will produce the same effects as having a larger axon diameter. For a given depolarization, 
the propagation reaches further and allows to open channels at a longer distance relative to the initial injection. You can see in the schematic why nodes of Ranvier are so important. Without these nodes, the current would simply end up decaying because it wouldn't have been regenerated by voltage-gated channels, but because these nodes are concentrated in voltage-gated channels, the action potential can be maintained through these checkpoints. The movement from node to node is named saltatory conduction, and it is considerably, sometimes up to a hundred times faster than the continuous action potential propagation in unmyelinated neurons. Thank you for watching this video. If there was anything unclear or there was a mistake somewhere in the video, make sure to let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you can consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. On the right, you will see the informational resources that I've used to produce this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in our next discussion.